Hey, Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Roots of Yggdrasil. I am so incredibly hyped for this game because it's like Islanders meets like a roguelike. I can't even think of the words. It's got everything that I wanted. So I actually, this is the second time I recorded this video because in the original recording of the video, I literally thought that a guy that I was in touch with a couple of years ago, we kind of like threw back and forth a few ideas about games. And the gist of what I said was like, it would be really cool if there was like a purely economically focused 4X or city builder roguelike set in like the Viking Ragnarok apocalypse. And you have to like, you know, time is a circle. You have to do loops and you could get meta progression and do all this stuff. And then I got a DM on Twitter from the developer of this game. And I was like, oh, this looks kind of cool. I didn't really look at it. I just loaded it up and I did a first impression. And oh my God, it was like literally down to a T, like the concept that we had discussed. So I got like super excited. I thought the dude had gone off and made the game in stealth without telling me that we had like threw back and forth the concept. But like if I was starting a game studio, this is the game that I would make. Um, and now it's going to be on Kickstarter. There'll be links to the Kickstarter. Be, like, dude, you have no idea how much I love this game. Um, we're in like the meta progression, like Holt, which is where all your stuff is. But I think, you know, you can like upgrade things and you get resources. We do actually have like blueprints. So we can kind of like upgrade everything now. Um, you can like get community housing blueprints. You can unlock the port. I'm going to go through and just unlock everything so that we can play around in like a sandboxy kind of a uh, feel here. And I'll explain what these things do when we get through. Now, remember, this is all in development, right? This is just a demo, the demo. And... Like, I say this all the time, but if a demo is this good, I cannot wait to see the full game. So you've got, like, a whole, like, s bunch of, like, systematic, what you call it? What's the word I'm looking for? You've got, like, a whole system of, uh, not blueprints, uh, meta progression. There's, like, a whole bunch of, like, different meta progressions here. You can, like, forge weapons. You can do all sorts of cool stuff. Actually, I don't know. We don't, we need to create Holt building. So, so we don't have a lot of meta progression stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and start an expedition so I can kind of actually talk to you about how you actually play the game. But we, can, we, we, we unlocked all the buildings. Um, so we have a housing selection. This is going to be, like, how you start your thing. You can have sturdy housing and you can have da 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 and there's all different types of them. And then you have a scion and your scion gives you some special ability. So, for example, our scion gives the builder ability, which allows us to build an extra builder every few turns for free. All buildings cost 40% less for the first five turns. That's actually really useful and gives 10 supplies when an action card is used, which I believe these are action cards, this builder card here. So he, like, uh, the, the scion or adds, like, a whole bunch of abilities here. Our goal is to power up the portal and use it to get closer to Gimli. We'll have to bloom the seedlings to power up the portal. But first, we need to build a proper settlement. I'm glad to join you on this incursion. So this is Thrasir, who is our main scion for this one. And they're going to talk about the building ability. So how do you play this game? Well, basically, you have to place buildings to gain enough resources and income to achieve these objectives. And when we achieve the objective on this tree bloom, right, this one says we need to explore five times in order to bloom this sapling. Uh, this one here is actually, this is very rare that they both have the same mission, but we need to explore five times to bloom that sapling. And then this sapling over here, we need to place two buildings with the wood symbol. So if you see down here, each of these buildings down at the bottom, they have their own unique symbol. So this is a magical building. This is a housing building. So we would need two wood related buildings to put down there. There's like a whole bunch of things. There's three main resources. Supplies are used to place buildings. So if I come down here, and I place some houses near my portal. I get plus one population over here. And when I fill the population thingy, I will get to unlock a new card that I can then place on the map. The houses also give you plus two supplies per turn. You click over here, you end your turn, and then the timeline up here advances. These bottom facing arrows, these are random events that happen during the timeline. They are almost always negative. You get like a bunch of negative events. If you make it to nighttime, the Ginu Gunun Gap Gap comes and it is essentially like a giant rolling blight and then the game is no longer turn based it is real time you have to try and build your town extremely quickly and finish your objectives and escape before this spreads across the map and consumes your settlement if you stay too long in a map you get less time in the next map before the Ginun Gap Gap comes and gets you so it's a, it's a very interesting and very fun game. So like, okay, I'm going to play start some, and, and dude, you would not believe, I almost want to release, I might actually release that initial reaction video uh, privately 
with this video because dude I cannot explain to you how excited I got when I started playing this and it was like literally if I had a game studio this is the game that I would make so we've placed down three houses and now we're making six supplies per turn we want to throw down as many houses as we can here nice and early um, in like a big string ideally now let's go ahead and pick this up we are going to we reached our first population goal so we get access to the equipment post the equipment post is an interesting building ah so they have the tutorials on still Basically, the equipment post requires three buildings. Although, by the way, I absolutely fucking love the art in this game. It's amazing. I love the art style. It's beautiful. Everything about this game is just uh, chef's kiss. I'm going to be back in it on Kickstarter. I recommend you do too if you like Islanders and you like roguelikes and you like this whole Viking aesthetic and the art style in it. Dude, it's such a beautiful, wonderful game. Like, you can zoom in and just look at that art style. I love the cell shadedness. I love the kind of low poly, high texture style. Oh, I just... This is the kind of game I love. Uh, I am going to go ahead and place my observatory. So what the observatory does is it gives you plus three magic per turn. Uh, it, it, or, well, I tier. Every turn it generates a little bit of I tier. Um, now, what the I tier can be used for is to unlock the constellations over here. These are like your kind of like meta progression for a run. You do maybe two, maybe three maps in a row and you keep the abilities here. So... Uh, so, lucky coin, increase the income of supplies, military, and I tier by 10% if my population number is even. That's this number out here. So, that's kind of a cool ability. Uh, Falcon Feather just gives three supplies per turn. And you can imagine, right? There's, you know, one, two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen. So, that's like, you know, 45 points over the course of a game. It's pretty good. Thunderous Horn gives you 100 might when the Ginnun Gagap appears. And then the Elphic Disc decreases the cost of explorations by 50% for the first five terms of a seabed if... I don't know what that if is. But I kind of like the idea of the Lucky Coin and the Falcon Feather. I'm going to take the Lucky Coin. This will just give me extra money as long as I make sure to keep my population at an even number. Now, the equipment post is important because if you look over here at these exploration tiles, we need to have the might resource and the equipment post is how we get might. The equipment post requires six supplies and three houses in range. However, if an equipment post is in range of another equipment post, it gets minus 10 to its resources. Uh, it gets extra resources the more houses it's in range of. So they're quite good to... That's why I like to build my towns in like little strings so that I can kind of hit a bunch of different houses without the equipment posts overlapping. So I think I'm going to place... No, that's going to be the last house I place this turn because I want to get the exploration started. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and place a equipment post on the edge of my town over here. That will give me enough military to do this, but I need to get an another 12 military. And I want these things to not overlap, if at all possible. So can I make that happen? I can get them pretty close. There's 15 points. Boom. So now we could do double explore. Explore and explore. And I would like to build another house. However, is 10% worth more than... No, actually, I think it's worth more for me to build a house here because plus two is worth more than 10% at my current housing level. So I'm going to keep stringing my housing out here this way. Pop a little house right there. Now, adjacencies aren't retroactive. You only get the bonus when you place a house, as far as I can tell. So, like, if I placed more houses around this training post, I wouldn't get any more military. That's not how it works. And now I've used up all my resources so I can hit end turn. And you can see the construction event here advanced. I could build another equipment post, but instead I'm going to build a sturdy house so that I can maximize how much housing I have. And additionally to that, I will actually hit the even number, which should give me an extra 10% uh, resources. So, you know, we're building up. Lucky coin is active. Let's go ahead and hit the end turn. Now, every time you hit end turn, this Thrasir ability is filling up as well. So we've got two explorations available. We explore over here and this will reveal a bunch of new resources and all kinds of stuff. So we need to get to 10 population. We have iron, we have trees, we have this. We need to explore more. We'll go ahead and explore this expedition. And we have over here, <clears throat> this is a building that if I'm able to place two military buildings next to it, like this equipment post, I will actually get a bonus. Now, that means I'm going to have to place three houses around here first. So I think I'm going to get to work on getting houses around here and then we'll explore this a little bit later. So let's start working on the houses around this one house. And then that's all I can afford this turn. Ooh, well, it was, still was a net increase. So until I'm at 20 supplies per turn, being uneven 
and building a house is still a net increase. It's going to be later on in the game that I'm going to want to build houses in twos. But we did hit 10 population and a great way for us to increase our income is to build either an iron mine or an iron extractor. Water wells are actually pretty decent too. Watch posts are quite interesting. Um, they're like meta military points. You build them near equipment posts and they generate passive equipment gain. I think I would rather do iron extractors. I would get two of them. Water wells are quite good, though. I will admit this. Like, that's five supplies per turn for a little bit more than a sturdy house. That'd be a lot of money. But I do like the idea of iron extractors giving me really, really good tempo. Yes, we're talking about tempo once again. I think I might stay where I am this turn, then build an iron extractor next turn to make a bunch of money. So I'm going to go ahead and just pass the turn. Boom. And then we're going to go ahead and build an iron extractor. Ideally, you would hit like two or three. Okay, this is three unreachable ground. Can I hit three? All right, I think. So we need to hit at least two houses. We're going to hit two of these nodes. Place this here. That's 60 money straight into our back pocket. And then we'll do the same thing over here. We'll get 60 money. So now we've just gotten incredible tempo. So we can build this up really, really quickly. So you can kind of see how like your decisions are going to chain together in really interesting ways. Um, I could build two equipment posts, but I think I'd like to continue to extend my village here because I'll get slightly more military points if I do that. So a single equipment post will get me 15 and I want like 30. One more house, I think, is what I'll do. And then a single equipment post will get me 17, right? What about one more sturdy house? I might be pushing my luck to do that. Yeah, I think I could do one more sturdy house and then I can grab this. An I-tier prospector. These are quite valuable if you want to do this. A fell station. Ooh, I do need to unlock a wood cutting thing. I don't need iron extractors. I might take the fell station here because it would allow me to meet the mission of this sapling over here. Now, if I build an equipment post, I would get 19. I would need to build one more house. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to build one more house. And this is so I can build an equipment post in range of this objective that will produce 21 equipment, which will allow me to completely fill out one of these. And then I'll place another one next turn and I'll completely fill out this one. I'm at 16 population, which means Lucky Coin is activated. So we're just churning, like things are working wonderfully. God, I just look, it's just such a simple, I, I don't know if you guys have played Islanders or any games like that. I just love it so much. We actually have a builder card here. I am going to place the second equipment post though. Um, and I want to avoid overlapping. So there's another 21. Uh, we rebuilt the ruins, which is going to allow us to draft a new card. And don't forget, these cards can be kept for this current loop. So we could get a trading post, which would give us a lot of money and some mo or a, lot, a lot of money per turn. We could get a community house, which needs two beer. I don't have any beer, so I don't think I can make that happen. Or the uh, I tier experiment center, which could be placed near my observatory and give us a lot more I tier per turn as well as an upfront amount of I-tier. That could be quite good. I-tier does last for the entire run, so this would be like meta progression. I don't think I need a trading post. I'm going to take the I-tier experiment center, um, and we're going to explore over here. So we've done four out of the explorers that we need to do. And let's go ahead and let the turn advance, and then we can open up this exploration area. And we've in fact found a caravan that we can send our leader on an expedition. Now, his abilities will be unavailable for a few turns, so maybe we want to do something else. I could build the I-tier experiment center. I think I might place another house. Well, what if I did an equipment post? 17 wouldn't get me enough, so I'm going to go ahead and build a house for free right there. 15 for placing on this side. Can I get better than that? I could get 19 over here, which isn't quite enough. I think I'm going to do the I-tier experiment center and just place it next to my current science area. This way I make a little bit more I-tier per turn and uh, I'm going to send my leader on this expedition boom and that's all she wrote there will be a negative event soon so we'll go ahead and end our turn oh right wait has this already been completed ah okay it was so we can accept their I tier and gain 15 I tier or we can lose 2 might and gain 40 I tier well I don't want to lose might and I'm just going to take the, the straight up I tier here and then I'm going to take the falcon feather to get that little bit of cash per turn let's go ahead and end the turn and we have another exploration available to us. Ah, so we're never going to be able to restore this tower because we just won't be able to get enough beer. So I might just try to get this explored and then move on to the next map really quickly. Um, I might be able to try to hit all three seedlings. Let's grab an equipment post. That'll be 19 explorey points. We'll end our turn. Uh, so lose 20 supplies when you complete an exploration. So this is a negative event, right? We hit a negative event and we're going to have to deal with that now for the rest of the game. Which is like a little bit unfortunate, but that's okay. 
we'll go ahead and place this here and then we can begin the exploration two turns from now we will complete that exploration and lose a bit of resources that's okay we'll go to the next turn we need to build in order to build a fell uh fell station we need to build two houses here so i'm going to save my money for a couple of turns we can take another constellation um, i'm going to take falcon feather when i can because that's extra money passively which would be very helpful we'll go ahead and open up this exploration ah send leaders on an expedition so that would be we, we could do this actually i think so we'll send thrasir on this one because this has potential to get us an artifact which will last the entire game we're going to bloom these trees and now that we've bloomed the trees we can technically we could end our run but i think you get better stuff if you if you bloom all of the trees and i think i can bloom this one relatively easily and so I'm going to. We pop down a couple of sturdy houses, like so. And then we can make a fell station. Make a bunch of money with the fell station. And then we place the second fell station just to complete the mission. We bloom the tree. And this is a wonder that is exploitable by certain buildings. And now I just need to maybe build a house to unlock a new card, like so. And then we're also on a round number of population. I mean, I could get a water well. And we could maybe start doing something over here. We are going to be here for another few turns while we wait for this mission to finish, so it, it could happen. If I place a water well right on the edge of this village, this would crush the amount of money they make. What if I built a house here? We're kind of, we're kind of exploring the potential here. It is starting to turn nighttime, so the, the GNU gap is coming. Uh, let's go ahead and take this for plus three money. And also take this. Uh, we do have like goals, right? We want to hit 10 I tier upgrades this run if we can. So there's our second one. Perhaps, I don't know if we can make this happen. I'll place another house right. Yeah, this would be, it's hard to do this. I'll be honest with you. We do have three, uh, we do have two more turns, but we are definitely going to leave before the, the plague appears because it's nice to leave without having anything get destroyed. Gives 10 might when you place three buildings in one turn. Okay, that could be quite good uh, long term if we keep it. So I place a water well there. And then I end the turn, I'll get a negative event, lose 50 supplies. I build a house using the builder, the free builder thing. Boom. Oh no, I don't have enough. Oh, I thought I would have more of these. Ah, okay. So I'm going to end my turn and then escape. We're on the edge of nighttime. Let's get out of here. We take this and we just bounce. Uh, we're going to get three acorns for this. That's, acorns are meta progression, basically. So unlucky. We do gain a blueprint and 20 supplies, which is quite nice. Um, and now we're on to the next map. And... The unfortunate thing is, because we spent a lot of time on that previous map, the Ginnun Ginnun Gagap is closer. It's going to reach us sooner, so we have to play this map with a little bit more tempo. But we do have more tools to deal with this map. Unfortunately, there are some downsides. We're still dealing with uh, some downsides, right? No, I don't think so. Um, but the nice thing is, we do get to keep our I tier upgrades. So we're making six cash per turn. So we have slightly more tempo on this run. I'm going to build the observatory uh, somewhere comfortable, like over here. So we can put things next to it. We need to explore five things. Uh, save up 450 money. And then over here, have 80 might. So we might have a hard time with this one. Might have a very hard time with this one. I'm going to get started by building a, uh, starting a village. So one house, two house and begin the explore we'll get our third house kind of like wedge them all together put an equipment post right on the edge so that we have enough to explore again place another sturdy house on the other side of town like so and this will allow us to pick out a new card iron mines iron mines are really good especially if you get them early because they produce passive per turn money water wells are kind of a similar thing they produce passive per turn money as do shrubs nice things about shrubs is they're technically infinite so they're really quite good at early money um i'm not seeing any iron i like the idea of getting shrub i'm gonna go for shrub and now the, the cool thing about shrubs is they only need to hit three buildings to activate so that's plus three money per turn uh there is a ratio of price here i think when a house is the shrub is always more efficient than a house if they are of even price for generating revenue but the thing about a house is it also gives you population so they're actually about even in value when they're equal in value if that makes sense right because population is quite valuable i would value a pop at about one money per turn i would kind of like that's how i would mentally you know square that away with myself let's keep on building we do a little building. We're up to 21 cash per turn. Now we end our turn and we can do the double explore. So what did we find? We found an expedition as well as two places to explore. And we found over here, ooh, a lumber mill area. 
and yet more places to explore. So uh, actually quite a big map that we found here. I'm going to go ahead and get that expedition started. This will make her unavailable for four turns, which I'm totally fine with. And what about I tier? Do we have any upgrades? So the next building created after a scion power usage is free. Very powerful. Uh, gives two might per turn. Two might per turn actually might not sound like much, but that's quite a decent amount. So I'd like to get to that sooner. Usually number mill buildings will require uh, a minimum amount of housing. So I'm going to get started on like a little housing area over here, just so that whatever lumber mill buildings I build here will actually be viable. And I'm going to get started on exploring this chunk right here. End our turn. I will get a third house in this section. Boom. The exploration is complete. It was a one turn explore. Um, we found actually another expedition that could be quite handy if we get there early. Um, unfortunately, we are kind of like waiting on this one. It's going to take quite a while. A very, very big map. This one needs two building buildings nearby. I'll end my turn. I'd like to build another house, but I'd also like to build the equipment post. I think I can afford both. I can. Uh, so let's go ahead and pop another house into our main village. Boom. And then build an equipment post with no overlap to maximize 17 income, which should give me enough to do a little bit of exploring over on this end of the map. Wait, hang on. Can I pick up a lumber mill? No, I can pick up more water wells. The I tier prospector is quite handy. Gets you a lot of I tier instantly. I might pick up the watch post here. I really do need as much might as I can get. And being able to place two of these down would be super handy. So I'm going to end my turn and immediately get the watch post. Boom. Now that's two military income per turn. And I think we'll begin the explorer over here. I think I forgot to actually click that. Now we do get a negative event. So we lose 20 supplies when we complete an exploration. That's really painful. Um, really, really sucks. I don't want to lose 20 supplies. I build a shrub right there for plus three money per turn. We go to our I tier. We pick up two money, two might per turn. That's perfect. And let's see where we stand. Let's complete this exploration. So we can pay 50 and gain 40 I tier or gain 20 I tier. I'm just going to grab 20 I tier. I don't have the 50. I'm going to place another military building. I don't know if your stuff can go negative, but I'm hoping that it's not. So I'll just quickly yoink. Can I get a better deal? What about over here? 11. There is like a little bit of pixel hunting when it comes to this game, but it's actually kind of fun because it's the entire gameplay loop of like, ooh, where do I place this to maximize? So if we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I won't have our ability for eight turns, but this expedition might be super valuable. Let's explore over here. Uh, we must be close to finishing this. Yeah, we just need a couple more explorers. And now if I tap this, I don't know if my money can go negative. Yeah, I spent all my money, so I don't lose out. And this is going to be a one turn expedition. So I should be able to send her on that uh, soon. I'd like to get my second watch post. I am making passive might per turn. It's not quite enough. I might just end my turn twice here to save up for the second watch post. I could build an equipment post over here. I think it would be good to get the second watch post, but I don't need... They can't overlap with each other. Okay, so now we're getting... Seven might per turn. That's quite good. Quite good. Broken spear. One eye tier per turn. Um, I'm not really going to get to use my Scion power very often in this game. Oh my god, dude. Uh, one eye tier per turn seems pretty decent. That'll potentially pay for another one of those abilities. I do have a little bit of money. Well, we're going to lose it all when we explore. 80 might and a free expedition. Okay. So we just need a lot of might right now. We do need to bloom two seedlings. We've got one seedling in the bag. The 80 might one might be a little bit harder. Let's explore. I think an equipment post. Do I want to build a sturdy house first or do I want to build two equipment posts? Let's build a couple of houses. We need like a little bit more income. We're going to be cutting it close with this game. We'll pick up 15 might right there and then we can begin that explore. We've got two explorers in the bank. We'll end our turn. We'll lose a bit of money, sadly. Um, there's only so many turns left, so I don't think a shrub holds a lot of value. I think maybe the equipment post holds a lot of value so that we can get to the um the 80 that we need for this really quickly let's drop more houses in our main village and um, we will end our turn oh sorry we need to open up this explorer ah we just found a wonder okay wonders wonders can't be used by certain things the ooh, the ginnon gagap is never far behind following us like our shadow so close that a strange murk can often emerge from the void reducing our vision and reminding us that our time is counted so this is actually one of the worst negative events you can get our building range is reduced by 50 percent, which means things like the equipment post it can hit far less buildings now the other night the, the one nice thing about it is it means they're less likely to overlap each other so i can actually kind of fit them in places where normally i wouldn't actually get much value uh so in terms of exploration i'm going to bloom this tree i think it's going to be impossible for me to hit this bloom uh, unless I get some serious money. Holy crap, we found a giant Thor's hammer thing. 
Um, yeah, it's going to be very, very hard for us to make that money. We just didn't really get much of a moneymaker build. I mean, I'll try, but I think our main objective should be to try to hit the uh, the equipment post goal. So there's another 11. We're up to 65. We'll go to the next turn. We did get a little explore off here, so we can find out. Maybe we find something really cool from this. Iron Gauntlets, the next building created after a Scion power usage is free. Well, we haven't even really used a Scion power at all. Let's go ahead and explore this. This takes zero turns to explore these. And we'll get some kind of trade deal. Lose 30 money and gain 25. That would actually be helpful. Or gain three population. Gain three population? I think I'd rather gain this. Click on the tree, confirm the tree, and then uh, call that a wrap on this run. Maybe I'll do a one more trade trade deal with a caravan over here and see what they have. If I can gain population again. Ooh, I should have gained the population because maybe I could have got a lump, couple of lumber mills and been able to complete this building. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I reckon we just get out of here quickly. We got like good value, five acorns, a little bit of stuff. We're done. We escaped. The run is complete. Uh, we could send some resources back to the Holt. So that I think this, yeah, I think this is the end of our loop. Uh, right now, I think loops are only too long, but you can see we got a bunch of abilities and this is obviously going to be developed in the main game. Bro, you have no idea. I love the art style. I love the gameplay. It feels like Islanders. It's just... Dude, I get chills because this is literally, if I was developing a roguelike city builder game, this is the kind of game that I would make. I would maybe not make it in the Islander style, but I love that it is in the Islander style. It's very crunchy, very, you know, place things here. They're going to need to tighten up a few things. Like, obviously, this isn't perfect. Um, but generally speaking, this is like nailing everything I appreciate about a game. I do think like, like there's certain things like the general style of the mountains is like, that's pretty good. But I think maybe these are like a little bit too round. Like they need to have a, like a little bit more of an inward curvature. Like they're just maybe just like slightly too round, right? But these, if that's the kind of complaints you have, like, oh, your mountains are like ever so slightly too curved in a convex direction. It's like, dude, this game is good. You know what I mean? Uh, but like we have all the blueprints here in this stuff. So I want to talk a little bit about the meta progression stuff. So if we go up to like, we can nurture the roots of the Yggdrasil. So here we can place blueprints so that we can plan our buildings. Uh, this nomad housing, which when we build nomad housing, we gain population when exploring and gain might when placed. Interesting. I like the idea of the nomad housing. Uh, increase the amount of seed beds in expeditions. Ah, I see. So this is like your meta progression. Right now we have two seed beds in our expedition. This would allow us to have three seed beds in our expeditions. I think um, unlocks the Scion Lif. Grants the... Da, 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 this feature will be available later in the game. Unlock higher tier research in the, in the workshop. I like the idea of longer seed beds. I also really like the idea of nomad housing. Let's kind of play around with that. So I think now when I go on a loop, we can go for sturdy housing or nomad housing, right? Uh, nomad's Moon, gain five population when you complete an expedition. I like this. This is, oh, this is kind of cool. Actually, I, I was only going to do one loop, but now that we unlocked a new housing selection, I kind of want to explore it. So let's give it a go uh, and see how it rolls. Our goal is to power up the portal and use it to get home. Yep. So they'll they'll play the tutorial missions basically every time you play, which is like, you know, fair enough. It's it's early access or not early access. It's, um, it's a demo and it's going into Kickstarter. There will be links to that in the description of the video. Dude, I genuinely am vibrating with excitement. Um, when I tried this game out at first. So let's place the little old observatory to make a little bit of I tier per turn. Let's take our first constellation. Decrease the cost of explorations. Ooh. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Decrease the cost of explorations. We're on an explorer type build. Huge, 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 huge. Let's start building our houses. One. Oh, they don't like to be near each other. I see they're nomad houses. Interesting. So it could be a bit harder to build like a city with overlap. Okay, I, I actually really like that. That's kind of a cool idea. And they make like a little bit more money. All right, let's go ahead and end the turn. And then throw down another nomad house nearby, maybe? Come on, it's got to be... Oh, we pixel hunted the correct tile. Next turn, we should be able to do another nomad house. And then boom. And now we have the resources for this. So when we do an explore, we will actually get five population, thus getting a new card. I like that as a gameplay loop. That They're very, very different from the others. Uh, we'll take the equipment post. Will allow me to gain might and expand my territory. Perfect. So when I place the equipment post, um, this thing, it's interesting. It's different. I'm going to place it like on the edge of town to get 15. And we'll go to the next turn. And I'll place the next one on the other edge of town to get another 15. We'll explore again. Boom, boom, boom. We lose 50 supplies just straight up. Ow. 
Damn. Can I sneak one on the other edge of town again? I can. Boom. And now we can explore. We get this. We pick up another five population. It would be nice to get... Ooh, iron mines are good for money. Let me see. What do we got? We do have an iron mine over here somewhere, potentially. But the question is, we have to choose between, like, iron mines and watch posts. And the passive... I think the money is quite good here. Money is something we're definitely struggling with a little bit. Uh, let's explore here, because that's another five population. Um, we managed to finish this expedition over here in the cave. Nothing popped up. Uh, weird. Unfortunate. So can I squeeze an iron mine in here? Now, in the perfect world, if I just rotate and wiggle here, I might eventually find a spot that will let me hit all three. Oh, it was here somewhere. Oh, it's right there. Pixel hunting. We're pixel hunting. If I just click hard enough, there we go. We got the 21 money per turn from a single iron mine. We hit all three of the iron thingies. That's amazing. That's super, super high, high tech. Like we're making lots of money now. We click this, we get another five population, we explore. We do need 80 might for this. Um, there is a wonder here that we could potentially exploit. Lumber mills would give me a lot of money. The fell station, the lumber mill and the fell station are kind of two sides of the same coin. The lumber mill produces a lot of money over time. Um, and destroys one tree per turn, whereas the fell station destroys all the trees immediately and produces a lot of money at the same time. I think the lumber mill is better value here, so I'm going to take the lumber mill. Um, I really do need a lot of might. I'm not seeing any more iron except for over here. I would like to explore and get that iron online. And um, we do need to get a lot of military. We're kind of halfway through our run, so it's getting a little bit spooky. Now, unfortunately, the lumber mill does need at least one house. So I'm going to place a house like, let's see, where's the optimal? That's going to be important. It's like, where is the optimal lumber mill location? Probably somewhere like here. So I'm going to plant a house like there. And if I place this, this will make 24 money per turn. And it'll destroy one tree per turn. That'll give me a ton of money. Boom. I could do another lumber mill to the north, dressed off this house. Getting me 18 per turn and it'll destroy one tree per turn. So now we're up to the big money. Um, is there anywhere I could maybe squeeze in? No, I'd have to start building a new housing area. And that's what I'm going to do. Let's get started on a new housing zone over here. Increase new buildings cost by 100% for how long? Jesus, for two turns? That's brutal. That's actually game. We can place a house for free at least. What have we got in terms of I tier? Three money per turn. Looks like we get the same constellation. Unlucky. I think I'm just going to build a house. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait out that curse. I'm just going to build. Um, I'm just going to wait until that's gone. All right. So we build one equipment post here. Do I want to build more houses? So we need to get to 25. Let's keep building houses. See if we can hit that 25 number a little easier. So there's 15 points, which will allow me to explore. And then I need to get another 20-ish points. So I'll place another house and then an equipment post right there. That gets me 17. So we're very, very close to our goal. We'll end our turn and throw down another equipment post. We actually need a lot of those. Let's find the right pixel. There we go. Boom. So all the trees are going away and the money that these are producing is starting to go down. Um, which is unlucky, but that's fine. We managed to get a lot of money out of those. And then we can go ahead and do an explore. I need to... So what does this need? Two unknown expeditions, three of these. We might have a hard time actually escaping this mission. Ooh, caravan. Saved by the caravan. So what can we get from this? Let's have a look. Lose 30 supplies, gain 25 might. That's actually huge. Or gain three population. I think we gain the might here because the might might let me actually escape. I can bloom this tree. I'm probably not going to get to bloom this tree because we're about to hit the Gnu Gap. Now, I don't know where the Gnu Gap is going to appear, um, which is a very, very scary prospect. But I would like to show it to you. I'm going to take the I tier prospector and I'm going to build it next to this wonder because that'll get me 50 stuff immediately. And then I'm going to go ahead, or 50 I tier immediately, and then I can finish off my constellation. Now, when I press this button, the game is going to change. The giant Gnu Gap plague is going to appear, and then it's going to start slowly spreading across the map, destroying everything that I know. So I lose five might income, which is unlucky. And so there it is. Uh, so the game, you know, the next time I take an action, the game is no longer turn-based. So when I, when I take this, right, this will start ticking. Although they might have changed that. Destroy all iron and gain a bunch of money. Um, but next turn, this will spread and destroy both of these things. And that's my seedling, right? And if I lose my seedling, I can't escape. So you got to be careful. I think this essentially spreads by one tile across the whole map. And it acts as essentially a timer. You can't screw around and wait the whole time. So I'm going to go ahead and activate and escape. And I think 
that's probably a good enough overview for you to know whether or not you want to back this on Kickstarter. I know I will be. It's really super exciting. I love this game. It looks really cool. It's essentially a roguelike city builder. Same kind of game that I would maybe make. There's probably a couple of things I would change about it. But dude, I cannot explain to you how excited I was for this game. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.